Hi there, my name's Courtney and I'm one of the reps here at the iForge. Today I'm just going to talk to you about some hand tools and some health and safety involved with them. Um, so, but before we start, we need to make sure that we always have the correct PPE on. So what I mean by that is making sure that you always have goggles on when you're past the line and you always have an, an apron on for everything you do. So let's start talking about the hand tools. So to start with, we'll talk about our saws here. So what we've got is we've got a, a tenon saw here. This is intended for woodwork and for cutting straight lines. We've then got a coping saw here. This is intended for curved lines, always in wood. And then these two here are types of hacksaws. So we've got our normal hacksaw and our junior hacksaw. And they're only intended for metal work. So now, some of the risks involved with saws is that they have very sharp edges and you don't want to catch them on your hands. But an easy way to avoid this is just to ensure that you walk around with them correctly and you actually use proper technique. So let's use the, the tenon saw for example. So they always have a, a, a shroud on them just to ensure that you don't hurt yourself. So try and keep that on whilst you're walking around with the saw on the space. So when you're walking around, just make sure you have it down by your side so that if you fall over, you don't hurt yourself. So the proper technique when you're using these saws is to ensure, always ensure that your, your finger is out on the, uh, on the saw and you have a proper stance, a strong stance, that, so you're not going to fall over whilst using them. So we'll remove the shroud now that we're ready to, uh, to start sawing. So just ensure that you have a notch and that you keep your hands out of the way. So just pull back on the saw and then just ensure that you, uh, you use the whole length of the saw to ensure that it doesn't skip out. And then always after you've finished using the saw, just make sure you, you replace the shroud onto it just so we can keep them in good working order. So just another note with the hacksaws is as they're intended for metal work, whilst you're cutting your piece of metal, quite often you'll get burrs along the sides of your cut. You just need to make sure that you use one of the files after you finish cutting it, just to ensure that you get rid of those and there's no sharp edges left. These can easily cause cuts and, and uh, we don't want cuts in here. So now I'm going to talk to you about some of our other tools. So here we have four different types of tools here. So we have a plane with a rasp and we have two different types of files. So let's look at some of the risks associated with the plane to start with. So a plane is basically has a, has a sharp blade underneath which you need to ensure that you keep your hands out of the way of. Always ensure that you use two hands whilst using it and have a stable stance when, uh, at all times whilst it's in use. So here we have a rasp. So a rasp is intended to take off uh, like small uh, bits of wood but slightly larger than a file would. Um, again, just ensure you have a stable stance whilst using it and ensure you use two hands at all times. So, uh, same kind of thing with the file. Just ensure that you, have, that you use two hands on it um, and, always, uh, yeah, and always use it whilst having a stable stance. And, um, the size of the teeth doesn't matter too much but it's mainly just what type of material you're going to be using. Um, traditionally, or mainly, we'd use larger teeth with woodwork and smaller teeth with metalwork. So now we're going to look at these three tools here. So first off, we've got a hammer. So the main risks involved with a hammer is that you just keep your hands out of the way whilst using it. Um, also, the sharp end of a hammer can cause damage, so just ensure that it's down by your side whilst you're walking around the workshop. So let me just show you quickly how to safely hammer a nail in. So always ensure that your workpiece is clamped and that you've always got goggles on just in case things break and fly off. And then what we'll do is we basically place it and just give it a small enough tap just so that it will stay in the workpiece. And then ensure your hands are out of the way whilst you hammer the rest of the thing in by giving it light taps. So that's the hammer. So let's look at the chisel. So you'll always use a hammer and chisel um, and you'll hit the end of the chisel with the hammer. But just ensure that you're not uh, chiseling towards someone else just in case you slip and also ensure that you're not chiseling towards, your, towards yourself just in case you slip for the same reason. So these chisels are incredibly sharp and we, we try and keep these, uh, these covers on them at all times. So just make sure that after you, after you use it that you just always replace the, the cover. And you always, yeah, replace the cover and put it back in the drawer after you've used. So the last thing is this centre punch. So often when you're drilling work pieces, you might find that you want to centre punch your piece. Again, you'll be using a hammer and a centre punch, so just ensure that you give it small taps and try and keep your hands as far out of the way as possible. So let's look at some of our cutting tools that we have here. Um, so we have a series of different types of knives here. So we have a few that uh, 
have non-retractable blades, so meaning that they'll always stay out. So just ensure after you've used them that you make sure that the blade is retracted and put away. Then we have some of these more safety knives that the blade retracts automatically by itself. They're less of a risk to leave around. Um, and then lastly we have a craft knife here, which has a selection of different blades. Just ensure that the blades always return back to, back to their casing um, and just make sure that you uh, keep your hands out of the way of using them all. So one of the main safety risks involved is basically is that people cut, uh, slip and cut themselves. So at all times whilst using them, just make sure that your hands are safely out of the way of any blades. Another thing is using the correct ruler type. So in the iForge we have two different types of rulers. These are safety rulers and these are just used for measuring. The reason these are safety rulers is because they have a taper on the edge of the, the ruler so you can't as easily slip and cut yourself. At all times whilst you're using any of these blades, just ensure that you're using one of these cutting mats, these green cutting mats. If you can't find one then ask one of our iForge reps. And lastly just make sure that you're always wearing your goggles whilst using any of them just in case things fly off and hit you in the eye. So the very last thing that we have out of these hand tools is the tin snips over here. So with these tin snips, it's fairly simple. Just make sure you keep your hands out of the way whilst using them and just ensure that anything that you are cutting uh, is fully clamped down to the table. Tin snips are generally, well, should only be used for uh, thin sheet metal. Um, they're not used for anything other than that. Thanks for listening to this safety video today and paying attention. Um, I hope you learned a little bit about some of the hand tools that we have in the iForge and hopefully when you're using them you'll be more aware of some of the risks that you need to think about.